JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, judiciary addressing concerns surrounding traffic ticket payments. The court administration division is supporting that the judiciary will be moving swiftly to address instances where traffic tickets have been paid but are being displayed as outstanding. The judiciary says it has taken note of concerns raised in the public domain by affected motorists. Motorists can check the government's traffic ticket management system, TTMS, to view their paid on outstanding traffic tickets. Some persons have complained that the system is showing paid tickets as being in arrears. In some instances, persons have indicated that these fines were paid in court. The judiciary says it understands that the situation is causing significant inconvenience to persons who have genuinely paid their fines. It is committing to working with these individuals to have the issue rectified within the shortest possible time. How to get help? 1. Persons still in possession of receipts. Persons who are still in possession of their receipts are asked to send copies of those receipts to customer service at cad.gov.jm. The information on the receipt will go through a verification process and upon satisfactory completion of same, the TTMS will be updated to reflect the payment with an indication that the matter was disposed of. 2. Persons not in possession of receipts. Persons who are no longer in possession of their receipts are asked to email their names, TRNs, and where available, the month and year the ticket was paid for. Internal checks will be made, and once the information is found, the TTMS will be updated to reflect the same. Persons may also contact the Court Administration Division at 876-754-8337. That's 876-754-8337 for additional information on this matter. Two shunted in separate incidents in Clarendon. As police process one murder scene in rules pen, made on Saturday night, gunshots from the adjoining community of Palmer's Cross alerted them to a second fatal shooting. In the rules pen incident, 31-year-old farmer Joel Bartley was killed as he cooked soup at the side of a shop. According to the police report, a man armed with a long gun entered the shop and asked to be served. He exited the shop after not getting any assistance, but he returned, this time with a man armed with a shorter gun who kicked open a zinc gate to the right side of the building and shouted, Police! Bartley attempted to step back into the shop, and the man armed with the short gun reportedly shot him in the head and he fell. The man armed with the long gun then shot him while he was on the ground. The shooters left on foot. The police were summoned and they arrived to find Bartley's body on its side. The incident occurred about 9.40 p.m. The police in the second shooting, which took place about 11 p.m., Fitzroy Blair, otherwise called Two Pound, was on his way to his house after leaving a community bar when several old explosions were heard. Residents later found him on Church Lane and alerted the police. Blair, a 35-year-old mason from Ramsey Drive, Palmer's Cross, was seen lying face down in a pool of blood. He was clad in a grey long sleeve shirt and brown plaid shorts, along with a pair of black and grey socks. A pair of black and white slippers, believed to be his, were seen in close proximity of the body. Investigations continue to both killings. Separate manager dies after being shot during robbery. The separate group is in mourning as its dairy farms facilities manager, Dean Griffiths, has died after being shot during a robbery in St. Thomas. Operations officer for the St. Thomas Police Division, Deputy Superintendent O'Neill Thompson, said that Griffiths was shot on the compound of Surge Island Farms about 2.30 p.m. on January 17. He was rushed to the Princess Margaret Hospital in Morant Bay for treatment and was later transferred to the Kingston Public Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries on Friday, January 20. The motive of his robbery, his licensed farm was also stolen, Thompson said, adding that the deceased was in his 40s. Reacting to the death, CEO of separate group, Richard Pandui, said the company is giving the loss. A facilities manager for the dairy farms was murdered, another mom grieving for her son, another wife without her partner, children without their dad. This can't make sense, said Pandu in a post on his Twitter account on Sunday evening. One dead, another injured in Westmoreland gun attack. One man is dead and another nursing gunshot wounds after a gunman opened fire to shop in Three Miles River in Westmoreland on Monday morning. The deceased has been identified as 23-year-old Jordan Obi from the community. Reports are that the incident happened shortly after 9 a.m. An eyewitness said that he was sitting outside the shop when he saw two men alight from a vehicle and opened fire, hitting the two men. 
that witnessed Salito cover and managed to escape unhurt. Obi and the injured man were said to be outside the shop drinking and celebrating a friend's birthday when the incident happened. The uncle of Obi said that his nephew's death has left him in a state of shock as he was no troublemaker. It is shocking. This community is not volatile, so I don't know what happened, the distraught man said. The Westmoreland police are investigating. Gun and ammo seized in St. James, man taken into custody. A targeted raid in the Johnson Common area of Picasseth, Cambridge on Sunday, led to the siege of a farm and several assorted rounds of ammunition. Reports from the police are that between 5.30 a.m. and 7 a.m., lawmen went to a premises and conducted a search. A search of a Toyota Axia motor car resulted in the discovery of a Glock pistol, 24 9mm rounds, 12.40mm rounds, 6 magazines, an inside holster, a rubber mask and 4 bank cards. A man has since been taken into custody. Investigations continue. Assault rifle recovered in St. Andrew, man in custody. Cops are sent to the St. Andrew Central Police Division on Sunday, arrested a man in relation to the siege of an assault rifle and four rounds of ammunition during an operation on Tavern Drive. Reports from the Halfway Tree Police are that about 6.20 p.m., lawmen were patrolling the area when they saw a group of men acting in a manner that arose their suspicion. They were accosted and a bag seen in their vicinity was searched and found to contain a Palmetto rifle with a magazine containing four 5.56 rounds of ammunition, according to the police. An investigation was launched and the owner of the bag was ascertained. It was subsequently taken into custody. Man accused of killing uncle at daughter's funeral turns himself in. The 37-year-old man, who allegedly stabbed his uncle to death at his daughter's funeral last week, has turned himself into the Port Maria police. The resident of Huddersfield in St. Mary is accused of fatally stabbing 67-year-old Marvin McLean at the Whitehall Cemetery. They were among those gathered to mourn the death of the younger man's five-year-old daughter. Speculation has been rife about the reason for the attack at the funeral. Some residents have indicated that there has long been tension in the family. However, relatives have refused to speak about the cause of the issue. One family member, who asked not to be identified by name, said that the family is still in shock from the murder. Look on that. Now we are bearing one. And the other fee fine lawyer fee. It no fear, said the relative. The man accused of stabbing his uncle to death turned himself into the police on January 19, four days after the incident occurred. Judge seeks proof of Bolo's death. The crown in the ongoing trial of alleged Klansman gangsters is yet to satisfy Chief Justice Brian Sykes that defendant Andre Smith, otherwise called Bolo, was the man shot dead in August last year when the proceedings were on a break. Smith had been on bail from day one of the trial and was expected to remain so until the matter resumed on September 19, following an adjournment in July when he was shot at the intersection of Hagley Park Road and Keysin Avenue in the corporate area. The accused gangster was driving a Nissan 80 wagon along Hagley Park Road when men driving on a motorcycle rode up and shot him before driving away. Smith succumbed to his wounds at the hospital. Smith was answering to charges related to a 2017 double murder as a membership of a criminal organization. Chief Justice Brian Sykes, ahead of his summation Monday morning, made inquiries about the proof of death for Smith, whose name was still being called during the customary roll call. The investigating officer in the matter, in taking the stand, testified that having been alerted about the shooting, he perused the photos taken by scenes of crime officials and was positive that the body was that of Smith. He said he saw photos of the body at the scene and at the morgue, he said while he did not attend the post-mortem, there was a statement from the scenes of crime photographer. The investigator under probe by the judge said he met Smith in 2020. The chief justice was however dissatisfied with accepting only what the investigating officer said as proof. In asking whether the officer who took the photograph was present and being told by the Crown that it would prefer if the individual was not present, Justice Sykes said, So we do have a problem because we need to authenticate the photographs. The judge further noted that the Crown could have gone the way of getting the defense to agree to the evidence so the matter could be resolved. The Crown, in responding, said it would source and produce the required documentary proof. Local Government Minister hands over two indigent houses in St. Mary. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie handed over two houses to persons in St. Mary under the Ministry's Indigent Housing Program. 
64-year-old Shirley Nugent of Hamilton Mountain in Rocker Bessel received the keys to a studio unit valued at $4.5 million, and 83-year-old George Sims of Haywood Hall, Port Maria, received the keys to a one-bedroom unit valued at $5 million. The self-contained units were constructed using concrete, block, and steel, with full bathroom suite, countertops, and cupboards for the kitchen, and a living and sleeping area. The units are to be fitted with water tanks. Speaking at the official handover ceremony on January 20, Mackenzie said the total investment in social housing in the parish so far stands at $27.5 million. It is the intention of this administration to ensure that those persons who are in need of proper housing have the opportunity to access this, he said, noting that the government is committed to improving the housing stock across the country. Mackenzie stated that as part of his mandate, more housing solutions are to be rolled out to meet the demand for housing. We in the Ministry of Local Government are playing our part in contributing to the housing stock of the country, as announced by the Most Honourable Prime Minister, he stated. In addition, Mackenzie said the resumption of the repair component of the housing assistance program is to be announced shortly and that the amount allocated to the program is to be improved upon. Meanwhile, Mayor of Port Maria, Councillor Richard Kerry, said so far, four units have been approved under the Indigent Housing Program for residents of the parish. He informed that the construction of three units have been completed and handed over to the recipients, while the construction of the fourth is underway. We really applaud this program. Prior to then, we were dependent on food for the poor, who over the years have assisted us greatly in this regard in providing housing for citizens. But this program has taken new light, where we see quality houses made of block and steel, and the finishing are well done. I would like to commend Minister Mackenzie for taking this program to another level, he said. The Indigent Housing Program is designed to specifically address the challenges of substandard housing by providing more effective ways to respond to the needs of citizens for a decent shelter. Applicants of the program are screened through the Poor Relief Department in each municipality. At JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.